Traitor. Written and narrated by Keep Up Momo. December was going by very fast, and Matthew was feeling a little happier since the Andrea conflict had ended. But after a while, he went back to being depressed. A certain someone quickly noticed this and took advantage of insulting Matthew whenever he could. That someone was Lorenzo. He loved to get Matthew angry or upset, and Lorenzo's friends would join in the banter. However, Matt never responded. He stayed quiet, which Lorenzo found rather annoying and unusual. One day, Lorenzo was denigrating Matt as usual. Look at this loser. You can't pull any girls. You really are pathetic, ain't you? And you ugly. There ain't nothing good about you. Several people at the table gave dirty looks, but of course, Lorenzo didn't care. Matt still didn't respond. He just sat there listening to music. After Lorenzo tried a few more times, failing each time miserably, he gave up and left, but not without several death stares. The most intimidating one being Leonard's. Matthew still didn't say anything, which concerned his friends. They all knew why he was quiet, but it was unsettling. Lorenzo, however, didn't know. He would constantly bombard them with questions, especially Leonard. Leonard would continually ignore and deflect, but he was losing patience and fast, and everyone could see it. Matthew was concerned, but he still didn't say anything. Now, Matthew is a pretty self-aware person and very observant of the things that go on around him. So, seeing Leonard getting angrier and angrier was rather upsetting. He considered saying something, but didn't want to speak up. A few hours later, Matt was biking home alone, thinking to himself, his mind running mad. Hey, Matt, when do you find some actual friends, freaking loser? Lorenzo said, passing Matthew in the other direction. Matthew didn't reply. He was fighting the urge to say something. When he finally got home, he started rapidly texting Leonard. Hey, Leonard, I'm going to tell you why I'm being quiet. I'm just readjusting. And I need time and space. That's all. There's more than what you're saying, but I'm not going to force you to tell me. Matthew was on the verge of tears. I can't tell him. I can't tell him. Matthew was sobbing. The voice came back again. The very same voice he heard on that rainy September night. You're jealous. Just admit it, you pathetic waste of space. Matthew couldn't handle it. He picked up his phone. He needed to make a call. Meanwhile, Lorenzo was on a Discord call with Alejandro and Leonard. They were playing Valorant together, but to Leonard it was more like smack talk. Oh, you should have seen his face when I passed him. He was fighting back tears. <laughs> what a loser. Wow, how interesting. Why do you sound so sarcastic? Cause I am. Lorenzo scoffed. Leonard still stayed silent. What is with you staying silent, Leonard? What's with you constantly bullying Matt, huh? Why do you constantly obsess over his goddamn life? Maybe if you weren't so jealous of him, you would actually have more friends. Who told you I was jealous? That's irrelevant. What's relevant is that you're obsessed, and frankly, I'm tired of it. I'm getting off. Good night. Damn. Took the words from me so quick. <laughs> as soon as Leonard got off the call, his phone rang. It was Matthew. Leonard knew this would be a bumpy ride of a call. Meanwhile, Lorenzo was making a call of his own to Caden. Hello? Yo, why is Leonard over here saying I'm obsessed over Matt and jealous of him? Probably because you are. Well, what does he know? Wait. Hold on, what did you say? I said you are. Just admit it. I told them everything about how you obsess over Matt. I'm tired of you, Lorenzo. I don't care anymore. Lorenzo sat there seething with rage. Caden called Shelby and Elliot and told them everything. Shelby started to lose it. Okay, what the hell does Lorenzo think he's playing at? I'm genuinely getting tired of him. We're confronting him tomorrow. For real? Man needs to find a hobby at this point. 
They made a plan and discussed other matters. Friday came and everyone was rather uncomfortable. Leonard, Caden, Alejandro, and Shelby all gave Lorenzo a hard side eye. And Lorenzo at this point was rather pissed off and was just about to say something until Shelby spoke up. Look, before you say anything, just to let you know, we did us don't want you here. So do yourself a favor and leave. Shelby, shut up. No one likes you. You're just a pick-me girl that everyone finds annoying. That's rich coming from someone who obsesses over people for no reason. Too damn lonely, ain't you, Lorenzo? Caden, you of all people shouldn't be talking. We just string you along. None of us care about you, so shut the hell up. Andre and Elliot, who had walked up during the argument, were rather tired and annoyed of Lorenzo's tirade. Elliot, especially. Lorenzo, tell them to shut up again, and I'll mop the floor with you. When Elliot said this, Lorenzo got up and started making violent gestures, getting physically angry and puffing up. But Elliot was not phased. Lorenzo, go find some grass to touch. Maybe then, he'll stop being annoying as hell. Lorenzo paused, and knowing he was backed into a corner, walked away. Everyone stared him down as he walked impetuously. Matthew had seen everything. In math class, Caden came up to Andrea during the class break. Hey, have you talked to Matt? No, I haven't. He doesn't want to talk to me. I'm getting really worried. I don't, I, I don't get it. Why would he just be quiet? Maybe he feels like he just can't trust us, you know? I mean, we all kind of just been a douche to him. Caden and Andrea sighed. How, How the, the hell, hell did this, did this even, even happen? happen? Okay, class. Break's over. It's time to get back to work. Miss Angela called everyone back to the class, and Andrea and Caden returned to their seats. Later that day, Andrea and Matthew biked home and were hanging out in Andrea's house. Do you need anything, Matt? Like, water or more food, maybe? No, thanks. Come on, Matt, please. You need to tell me why you're being silent in school. Why do you care? I care a lot about you. I made the mistake of hurting you when you couldn't handle it, and now I want to help you. Okay? Andrea, I'm fine! I just need to readjust some things! Okay, if you're sure, Matt. Andrea and Matt sat in silence. They were both thinking intently. Finally, Matthew spoke up. Leonard is starting to worry me. Well, how so? It's Lorenzo's bullying. It's ticking off Leonard, and he's been getting more and more... Oh. You think he will? Yeah. Andrea said no more. She understood the point clearly. An hour later, Andrea and Matthew heard a knock on the door. Opening it, they saw Elliot, Caden, Alejandro, and Shelby. Hey, how y'all doing? Sup, guys, gals and pals? Hey, what's up? Oh, oh shit, shit, what's up? What up? I hope y'all ain't forget about me, because I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The rest of the day was rather fun for the group, though the night wasn't for one. The group decided to have a sleepover and set up sleeping mattresses for everyone. Eventually, they all fell asleep. It had been a few hours, but it felt like ages. Matthew felt rather uncomfortable and started to twitch and jolt. His eyes opened and adjusted to the dark. Finally, he was able to look around. Everything seemed normal. Suddenly, Matthew felt a cold and chilling feeling flash over him. He felt as if he was being watched. He looked around, and his mouth dropped. Everyone was gone. He began to breathe harshly and looked over to one corner of the room. Matthew froze, for what he saw was a dark figure. It looked exactly like him except its body was calloused and scarred, and lashed with bruises all over. Matthew tried to move, but he couldn't. He tried to scream for help, but he couldn't. He was frozen. He wanted to stop seeing it. He wanted to run away. He wanted to- You're worthless. Your friends don't care for you. They'll all leave you to rot in a shallow grave, you pathetic waste of space. <laughs> 
Matthew so, woke with a jolt. It was dark in the room. He looked so, around. He was hyperventilating. <laughs> Suddenly, he felt eyes on him. He looked over and saw Alejandro looking at him, rather shocked and aghast. N- the ni- nightmare? Safe. 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 Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. I, um, hi, hi, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you up. Go back to sleep. Alejandro did just that, rather confused and shocked, but also concerned. For Matthew to wake up shocked and scared for his life like that wasn't normal. Matthew didn't go back to sleep. He couldn't stop seeing the image of that calloused, grueling face. It kept flashing over in his mind over and over again. He hoped it went away soon. It was now Saturday at around 6.30 in the morning, and everyone was still asleep. Matthew was still wide awake. His mind had calmed down a bit, but he was still rather alert. While he had stopped seeing the images of that... thing, he kept on hearing the grisly, demonic voice in his head. You're worthless. Your friends don't care for you. They'll all leave you to rot in a shallow grave, you pathetic waste of space. After a while, he was able to forget about it and forced a smile as the rest woke up from their fairly peaceful slumber. <sighs> I had a great sleep. For real? Me too, bro. I feel well rested. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 Dude, I'm feeling great. <laughs> what about you, Caden? It was normal. Nothing too special. Matt had stayed fairly quiet during the whole conversation. He was hoping the group didn't ask him anything. Alejandro could have sworn he saw Matt staring daggers at him. The group talked for a bit and then went down to have breakfast. They chatted for a little bit before walking to Blossom Park. It was a cool breeze on that day. The sun was shining and the snow was glistening as the sunlight refracted into a blinding ray of beaming light. Matthew was still rather quiet. Shelby wanted to break Matthew out of his little shell. Matt, we're not in West Gardens right now. You can talk to us. I just have nothing to say. (laughs) Well, how about last night? Did you sleep well? Matthew's smile faded ever so slightly. He didn't expect that question. If anything, he was hoping they didn't ask him at all. It was normal. I slept like any other night. Nobody noticed Alejandro's face completely blanch. The memory of Matt waking up panting and gasping like he had gotten stabbed scared the crap out of him. But he couldn't understand why Matt was acting as if it didn't happen. He still didn't say anything. When they finally walked into Blossom Park, they saw Leonard who they had planned to meet with. They also found the park covered in a thick white blanket of snow and ice. Snow boy! Elliot, think fast! Oh, I get back here! Uh Uh-uh. I'm ready to mess y'all up. Oh, nah, you're all going down! Shelby, get Andrea! I got Elliot! Dead, bro! Y'all are gonna have to pass me first. Yeah, Caden and I are gonna mess y'all up. Ah, you wish, Len. Y'all wanna put that to the test? Did I stutter? Oh, I'm soloing all of you! For the rest of the day, the group had fun playing in the snow. They had completely forgotten about a certain kid who was ready to bring hell to them the coming Monday. That Monday came fast, and Lorenzo was ready to rip Matthew a new one in second period science. Though that class wasn't for another 90 minutes, and Lorenzo was already taunting Matthew before the first period even started. Matthew still putting on the quiet front, like he had been doing for the past week, said nothing. Leonard was getting rather pissed off, which promptly made Lorenzo leave. You need to tell him to piss off, bro. I'm tired of him treating you like garbage. I can't too much. I just got to ignore it. I pride myself in being patient, but right now it's running thin. Be ready for second period. Matthew walked into his class, mentally preparing himself for the onslaught in second period. When second period came, Lorenzo was already there with some other students. Leonard was nearby, listening and watching with interest. Lorenzo glared at Matthew, eyeing him up and down in sheer disgust. Hey, look, guys. There's the guy who was born in a highway accident. (laughs) (laughs) That wasn't even funny. (gasps) What did you say? Boy, you heard me damn well. Did I stutter? What the hell did you say to me? You must have lost your damn mind, you stupid piece of... 
What the hell? Did Leonard just throw a punch? Is he fine Get again? the hell off me! You wanna talk that stuff, huh? You ain't so high and mighty now. Leonard, What stop. are you three doing? Guards, separate them now. The guards did just that, though without struggling to get Leonard off of Lorenzo. Huh? 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 Principal- My office, now. Principal Adam dragged the three boys into the office and had them all separated and put into different rooms and immediately started calling their parents. Both Leonard and Lorenzo were taken into the office first to discuss what had happened. Matthew was kept waiting for 15 long minutes. It felt like ages. All he could hear from the other room was muffled yelling and arguing. It was a while until Matthew was finally called in. Matthew, please come in. Matthew said nothing. He just walked in. So, Mr. Green, do you want to explain what I witnessed? I request my mother to be with me. Leonard, where is my son? Speak, Speak of, of the, the devil. devil. He's talking to Principal Adam. Mrs. Green, your son requested you be with him while we discuss what happened. The three walked into the office and Matthew explained everything. Mrs. Green was staring daggers. So, you're telling me... That my son was getting bullied and you swines did nothing about it? Mrs. No! Hell no! You let my son get bullied, that is a fact, and yet you dragged him in here! Mrs. Green, your son was a witness to a fight, so we need to ask him the details of what happened. So then, what about the kid who taunted my child? What's gonna happen to him? We will investigate that, and actions will be taken accordingly. <sighs> Let's go, Matt. I need a moment. Outside, Leonard and Lorenzo's mom were just as confused and upset. Why, Leonard? What was your reason for throwing a punch? Because he was bullying Matt? So you fight him? That's what happens when you bully my friends. Oh, get over yourself. Bully? What are you talking about? Oh, come on. It was only some light sarcasm. Mr. Lorenzo Hudson, what did you say to that boy? He said a lot according to my son, Rosa. Oh, and by the way, Ruby... You and your son have my gratitude. No problem, ma'am. So, Lorenzo, want to explain to all of us what you said to Matt? Lorenzo's face completely blanched. The color drained from his face so fast he went as pale as a ghost. He looked over at Matthew. He had a face of desperation. Don't look at me. Defend yourself, Lorenzo. Go outside, Matt. I'll deal with it. Matt did just that and walked outside while the rest of the group went to Principal Adam's office to explain everything. About 45 minutes later, Matthew heard yelling outside. Expelled? Are you happy, Lorenzo? Mom, please- No, 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 I don't want to hear it, Lorenzo. What happened? Let's just say they didn't expel him because they knew he was bullying you. So then... I might have recorded some things. You didn't! I did. Are, are, are you ha happy, Leonard? Yes, you did this to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Lorenzo gave a face of defeat and walked away. Matthew and his mom left as well. And it was just now Leonard and his mom. Don't let me catch you fighting up at school no more, young man. You want to get ice cream? Yes, please. Please. <laughs> they left West Gardens. Leonard somehow managed to enjoy the rest of his day. Leonard wouldn't even be ready for the turn of events that was on the horizon. Matthew and his mom spent the rest of the day relaxing. At night, they went grocery shopping for some sushi and other snacks. It was rather fun. Driving back home, however, wasn't. Sorry about today, mom. It's fine. Just don't let people like that keep bullying you. Though it doesn't matter anymore. Sure, mom. Hey, Matt. I've been needing to tell you something. I have been thinking about switching schools for you. Matthew's eyes narrowed, and he gave a look of confusion. What do you mean? I'm sorry, Matt, but I decided to withdraw you from West Gardens a while ago. I told them tomorrow would be your last day there. Your new school is Santa Rosa High. Matthew heard nothing else of what his mother had to say. It was all a blur. The only other thing he did hear was... I even spoke to the principal, Principal Thwaites, and she offered to give us a tour of your new school in a week. Listen to the voicemail. Hey there, Mrs. Green. I'm calling back to discuss your son's transfer. If you want, I can give you a tour of the school over the winter break. 
Matthew said nothing for the rest of the car ride. If Matthew didn't have insomnia before, he most definitely had insomnia now. He just couldn't sleep. That demonic voice was keeping him up. You're so weak you can handle Lorenzo. Freaking Leonard had to fight for you! You're so weak, you pathetic little loser. Matthew sobbed. Please, leave me alone! You're weak! You're weak! You're weak! You're weak! You're weak! The next week, Matthew walked into West Gardens, knowing this would be the last time at his godforsaken school. It came 30 minutes before first period. He saw Alejandro. Hey, Matthew, how you doing, buddy? I'm fine. Yourself? The rest of the gang are skipping school for the rest of the week because we got all our assignments submitted for this semester. I might join them. <laughs> Alejandro looked over. His eyes narrowed. He saw Matthew crying. No, not crying. Sobbing. Oh my god. Are you okay? I have to tell you something. I'm... I... I'm leaving West Garden. What? What are you talking- Can't tell anyone, Alejandro. No one. Okay, I won't. The two went quiet. The only sound they could hear on that gloomy, dark, snowy morning was Matthew's silent sobs of pain. Alejandro tried to cover him out as best he could. He didn't want to admit it, but Matthew crying brought a type of distress he had never felt before. Seeing Matthew cry gave him a feeling of deep regret and sorrow he hadn't felt in a very long time. God, didn't think this would be my weakness. Alejandro sat there in silence. He never thought hearing about his friend transferring schools would be so devastating. But hearing this from Matt was so painful. Nonetheless, Alejandro quickly devised a plan. If Matthew's last day was today... He would give him the best send-off ever then. Two hours later, Alejandro waited anxiously for the bell to ring so he could sprint off to lunch. Finally. And just like that, Alejandro splinted out of the class, determined to raise a frown into a smile. He locked eyes with Matt when he saw him. How we feeling? Better, actually. Great. Glad to hear it. There was a long silence. I was looking at some of the pics I took recently. <laughs> and bro, they're priceless. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Look at this, bro. Caden looks like they're the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> Why did Shelby look like a The two cow? laughed for the rest of lunch. It was so satisfying for Alejandro. Seeing Matt smile was so relieving. Soon, the end of the day came in sight, and Alejandro and Matthew both walked to where they had locked their bikes. Well, I hope I made your last day here the best. You certainly did. I'm glad, Matt. I wish I could bike home with you, but I have practice to get to. Then go. I'll be fine, don't worry. Of course. Hey, Matt? Yeah? I'm sorry for everything I did when Lorenzo was around. I'm gonna miss you, dude. Don't worry about it. I'm going to miss you too. See you around. See you, Matt. Good luck at your new school. With that, Matthew biked off. Alejandro watched him as he disappeared onto the horizon. He walked away to go to practice. He hoped that Matthew would be alright. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs>